Good afternoon and welcome to the interview section of Mihas International. And as it's Wednesday, we have um, Sandy Malil with us and she's the managing editor of Key to Mihas Costa magazine. And accompanying her is celebrity chef and also award-winning chef, Steve Saunders. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Steve um, has chosen La Cala de Mijas, lucky for us, uh, for his little geranium restaurant, uh, which opened in May, uh, the first this year, but he's already booked up. He uh, did think about semi-retirement, but um, he's not uh, had much chance to relax and definitely not much chance to have too much sunshine. So we're going to find out a little bit about him. Oh, oh, I'm sure lots of our viewers already know a lot anyway. Good afternoon, both of you. Good afternoon, Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And uh, I know you're, you're busy in the daytimes too so it's wonderful that you've come to see us thank you no, it's my pleasure it's lovely actually to, to come back and do a bit of tv it seems to have been missing it yeah. for a while well you did it for so many years didn't you because I, i'll just um your television credits include ready steady cook uh the um good morning own channel four show here's one i made earlier uh you did radio as well yeah, yeah. and um you were there at the very beginning of ready steady cook weren't you with your ideas yes, of yes, you know yes. developing it well i was at how it came about was that I was working for This Morning and Good Morning. I was doing both sides, both channels. Which is BBC unusual, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. And I think they didn't like that. <laughs> and one of the producers said, look, we've got this new show. And would you like to be involved? And I said, yeah, I'd, I'd love to be involved. And tell me about the show. And they, they gave me the format. And me being me, I'm quite critical. But I mean, that's <laughs> kind of like, you know, as a chef, you, you, you need to be. Uh -huh. And I was reading the format and saying, well, it's, it's OK, but it needs this and it needs that and it needs the other. And they wrote that in. And then they said, of course, we want you to audition for it. Uh -huh. And I thought, well, why should I be auditioning for it? I put some of the ideas. <laughs> <laughs> but I did audition. I went along with the flow of it. And, of course, then the show took off. And originally, we were given, or awarded, if you like, 12 shows. So we were really pleased and we went and celebrated. Yeah. And it was really funny. We went on a boat and celebrated and drank great wine because we'd just <laughs> been commissioned for 12 shows on BBC Two at 4.30 in the afternoon. And we're going, yes! <laughs> and then after 12 shows, they said to us, and we were just expecting to be well you know thanks very much but that's it mm. they said what we want is we want to show every day monday to friday and we want it to run all year and we want it to run for at least five years and we went, what oh my goodness <laughs> we just couldn't believe it yeah. honestly we were completely blown out of the water yeah. and then we at that point and this was about 90 not well 94 it was 94 um, at that point we then had to go and look for for more chefs yeah. and of course I didn't personally do that but, the, but they did that and they brought the chefs to us and said what do you think of him what do you think of this one and we wanted a bit of comedy we wanted a bit of you know a bit of flavour in, in there that wasn't just chefs cooking against chefs because it didn't otherwise it becomes very serious yes it and, you know, very competitive got, with chefs <laughs> exactly and especially Michelin star chefs mm -hmm. so, oh, God, everything has got to be perfect and rather than have that as a challenge they wanted something with comedy and they said what about that Ainsley character uh -huh. and I remember we went to the Piccadilly store in London to watch Ainsley as a stand-up um, comedian you know doing a stand-up <laughs> gig and they said I said you know he's going to be fantastic on there but can he cook <laughs> and they said but yeah but you can you can work with him you can all work with him and we can teach, teach him. him yeah and that's what he did he went with a lot of the chefs on there he worked with Paul Rankin from Ireland and he didn't work for me they sent him to various chefs and off he went on the show. And, of course, he, he was a huge hit. And mm -hmm. eventually, as most people know, if they have watched Ready, Steady, Cook, yeah. a lot of people have, yeah. um, he took over the show. So he's kind of became Ready, Steady, Cook. Yeah. yeah. And would you say that Ready, Steady, Cook really started that big phenomenon, if I can say that word? <laughs> <laughs> well, with water, About, it's fine. After yeah. wine, it's difficult. It's difficult, yeah. yeah. Um, of... Um, everybody watching cookery programmes and loving them, uh, as they still do nowadays, mm -hmm. really. Do you think that was the start of it? It was certainly the, helped It was mm -hmm. in the beginning. I mean, obviously, there was food before that. The Galloping Gourmet, yeah. you probably yeah. remember. People like that. And Keith Floyd, let's not leave yeah. him. Fanny Craddock. Oh, Fanny Craddock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Fanny <laughs> Craddock was... Incredible. It didn't have such... I mean, I know it had a following, but it just seemed to sort of, like, as you say, mushroom. <laughs> yes, no. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Fanny Credit was in incredible. I mean, I didn't know her, but those kind of days... So there was this culture for great food. But I think that Ready, Steady, Cook was at the beginning of education and entertainment in mm -hmm. food because they hadn't seen that before. It was more educational. Yeah. And then suddenly to incorporate 
entertainment as well. And you have to when you... I mean, I'm not going to bore you with production things because it's not my thing, but I, but I understand it. If, you, if you're going to screen a show at 4.30 in the afternoon, you have to be educational because mm-hmm. there's kids going to watch it. Yeah. You need to teach them something. But you have to have a bit of an element of entertainment as well because otherwise it becomes boring. Mm. But so if you put just entertainment on in the afternoon, it's too much. And if you put just education, it's too much. So we, the first show that actually incorporated both those elements and did it so successfully, hence the format ran on and on and from that then yeah I'm absolutely certain that food shows just cropped up all over the place because, yeah. and I know that for sure because we went to see ITV with Ready Steady Cook and they went nobody watches food we don't, we're not interested and we, 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 sat in this, yeah, we sat in this meeting and they turned us away we went to BBC Two and they said well we could do it with an educational show mm-hmm. and Peter Bazalgette who I believe is now chairman of Channel 4 a very powerful man in, in TV um, who was the owner of the company Basal Productions said, "Well, look, this isn't just a this isn't just a cooking show. This is about entertaining people and getting them to cook. So it kind of changes their lifestyle and mm-hmm. gets them to cook fresh food." And that was right on my street because yeah. I've always, you know, if I'm here for a reason, I'm here to cook people fantastic to, food yeah. that's fresh and local and season. That's kind of my passion. Yeah. So it suited me. And um, you're uh, one of the exclusive members of the fellow master chefs of Great Britain as well. Uh, you've written ten books and. A a lot of them are about you know cooking with fresh seasonal ingredients mm. yeah you know all for being healthy yeah, yeah. um and you opened the pink geranium restaurant mm, uh, that was a long while ago yeah, yeah a long time ago but you got michelin star you got uh, three aa rosettes mm. um and you also had a restaurant i believe in manchester as well lowry yeah i had to, i had a yeah. few at the time kind of went through a bit of a boom some time <laughs> and the pink geranium was the classic and that's why we've created the little geranium yeah. in la cala and it's a beautiful little restaurant. If if you haven't seen it, I don't think you've been of you. But if Not yet. I, been, I, I want to go. Yeah, it's definitely. a little corner restaurant just behind the town hall mm-hmm. in Cali Ronda, they call it. But it's in the centre of La Cala, it's right behind the town hall. Mm-hmm. And it is just Michelle, my fiance, yeah. who is also my my business partner. Mm-hmm. But she's you know, but but she's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. She's, she's an ex ballerina, isn't she? She's an ex ballerina, yeah. and she's beautiful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she looks the part. She's she's a fantastic hostess, and I'm in the kitchen. And me being my usual sort of eccentric self, I'm running in and out of the kitchen and meeting people and shaking hands. And loads and loads of people have come up and said, you know, we remember you from the Pink Geranium. Lots of people have said they remember me from Ready Steady Cook as well. But mm-hmm. most, mostly mm-hmm. from the Pink Geranium. So yes. the Pink Geranium was one of those, the, the initial restaurant, it was just outside Cambridge. And it was just a fantastic little sort of chocolate box, if you like, of, of a thatched cottage with just fantastic food in it. And I just wanted to recreate that as almost, this is a bit of a joke, this is going to sound, but as almost like a retirement thing, I'm kind of winding <laughs> down. Instead of having restaurants, as you said, yeah. Karen, in Manchester, but we had one in Newmarket. Yes, we had true. Came. We had a hotel in Cambridge. We had, um, I was involved with Brockett Hall in Welling Garden mm-hmm. City, which is Lord yeah. Brockett's mansion. Yeah. And all of that. I did many, many restaurants. But rather than... Um, to another great big empire with loads of staff and all the problems that go with staff. I just thought we'll just buy this little corner restaurant and have some nice food. And in my last kind of winding down, my last days, I'm sort of saying, <laughs> I'm 80. But, but what I mean is, I don't want to be. You'll you still know, be chefing when you're 80. Yeah, no, I probably will be, yeah. But I just thought, let's come here because I've got a beautiful villa here in Spain. And why not use that mm. and then just enjoy this little restaurant and send out some really nice food? And that's what we bought it for. But that's kind of fallen on its face in the sense that the restaurant isn't little and, and only a few people in it. It's packed. Yeah. And I mean, it's just a full-time job. It's yeah. completely crazy keeping up with it, honestly. <laughs> well, you've gone for a really uh, sort of um, good combination there. You've gone for um, really high standards, um, using sort of local produce and organic produce, yeah. um, and keeping it at a user-friendly price, yeah. uh, which, you know, is, is a really good combination. Key and things. it shows, doesn't it, because you're packed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Richard Branson once said to me, that's name dropping, but <laughs> at a dinner party, and showing my eccentricity, I turned up at his dinner party um, because it was a, a, a celebration of his airline that was flying into um, Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. I turned up in a cowboy kit, <laughs> and, and was, everybody else was in black tie, and I really stood out. <laughs> and people came up and said, When are you on? <laughs> no, I was entertainment. But I sat next to Richard Branson, and he said to me, I said, Sorry, I said to him, 
I said, what, God, millions of people must ask you, but what is the secret of success? And he said, the secret is, it's a premium product, but at economy prices. Mm -hmm. And I've always kept that in my head. And what we're doing at the Little Geranium is exactly that. We're doing a premium product, premium quality, not just food, but, but decor, tables, chairs, cutlery, mm -hmm. nice stuff. Yeah. Not cheap and cheerful. All the cruets, Michelle has chosen some yeah. fantastic stuff and she's brilliant with design. Uh -huh. And she's chosen these little cruets, like little owls and little hens and geese. Yeah, lots geese. of cute little rabbits we had last yeah. time. It's kind of, just to put <laughs> the view, because some of the viewers obviously wouldn't have been, um, or most of them wouldn't, because we've only been open two weeks. Yeah. Um, it's shabby chic. So that yeah. shabby chic look, but beautiful chairs, which we had made in London and shipped over. Beautiful mirrors, candles everywhere. And that lovely pink kind of thing that we had at the Pink Dragon. It, it, it's what's quite called. vintage, quite retro. It is. From the mm. photographs. It's, kind of, yeah. it's retro, yeah. but it's lovely retro. We have 1920s music playing in the background. Oh, and it's a really, yeah. really stunning little place. But, you know, in all honesty, I didn't expect it to take off like it's taken off. And, and we're all exhausted, yeah. but we're keeping up with it. And we're recruiting heavily. Uh -huh. And we're only doing one table, one sitting... Um, per lunch and per dinner so we're not rolling tables over and we don't want to no we're, we're not going to be one we're of those restaurants that you know there's okay in and go out. on clean up and get another yeah. table we just want it to be a fantastic but going back to what Branson said if I had had chosen that restaurant and selectively said okay one table a night or one table a lunch but to do that the price has to be x mm -hmm. then it would be a lot less busy yeah. and the, the, the key there is Keep it premium, but keep it accessible. Yeah. And that's what we've done. And by being accessible, we are so busy. I mean, we're just, it's incredible. So I'm really pleased. And I believe it's um, creative tapas in the daytime. Lunchtime. And then in the evening, it's the dinners, the yes. a la carte menu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but the a la carte menu is only small. I mean, mm. we've got five starters. Sandy yeah. and Ross go quite a lot. Um, the, you know, five starters, three fish, five main courses, mm -hmm. five meat main courses. And so it's a small menu, but it's a small menu that I change almost daily. I sit in front of the computer, and I, this morning, mm -hmm. I rang a butcher, and I said, can you get me any venison? And he said, I've got some. Oh, I said, well, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you can't get everything over here. No. It's not that easy to get the supplies like we can mm -hmm. in the UK. And he brought in a saddle of venison, and it looks pretty good. And we're going to try that out tonight with little black currants or blackberries, whichever I can get. Mm -hmm. I need to go shopping for them. Um, in a little jus, and it would be fantastic. And that's the kind of thing we do. So we look at the menu and think, what can we get? What is really fresh? And what is really brilliant? With a little confit duck we're doing with, with kumquats, mm -hmm. which you can get over here quite easily. I'm hungry. And they, they, they <laughs> cook them, and I know it makes me hungry as well. I heard my stomach was rumbling. <laughs> but um, we didn't have time to eat either. <laughs> but things like the, the, the sweet oranges, sweet and sour, really. And the crispy duck goes really well together. That kind of food. The it's simple food, mixing, yeah. but, but really nice. And so I can never really say 100% what's on the menu. We put on the website that it's an example mm -hmm. because I'm a creative kind of chef. And, mm -hmm. and on Tuesday, I might want it to be one thing. And on Friday, I might want it to be something else. Yeah. But it is just all great ingredients. That's what we're doing. Great ingredients, cook simply. And, 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 and you can't go too wrong. If you've got really good meat and really fresh fish, mm -hmm. How can you muck it up? Mm. And that's what I can't, I don't understand why no one else is doing it. Because really, I mean, I shouldn't really say it because there's some great restaurants, mm. but, but it is, what we're doing is simplistic. It's written on a piece of paper um, in typewriter font, mm. in the old fashioned typewriter font, old, yeah. on a clipboard. And we say, look, we've got these starters, we've got these main courses, and it's accessible prices. You immediately see the little euros next door, and you think, well, I'll give it a go. And yeah. that's what's happened. It's just gone. And it's, it's just exploded. snowballed. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's snowballed. exploded, really. Yeah. And you also have organic wine as well, mm. don't you? So you've got a good selection there. Of yeah, that's a new addition types. for us. Mm. But in the original mm. Pink Geranium, we were very predominantly organic. And I remember those days, in the early days, this is 1986, 87, people used to ring up and say, um, can we, we'd like to book a table at Pink Geranium because we've heard great reports, but mm. can you tell me what organic is? Is it all vegetarian? <laughs> and I was saying, well, no, of course it's not all vegetarian. All organic just means it's organically grown, mm. naturally grown without pesticides, herbicides, fungicides. Those mm. nasties that are put everywhere. You know, there's always an argument for mm. um, different forms of, of farming. But we always thought that being foodies, we looked for ingredients that were not mucked around with too much. Mm -hmm. and, and over here, we've done the same. And we've looked for ingredients that you can buy as naturally as possible without them being intensively farmed. Mm -hmm. You know, like, for example, they call it over here, pollo campo, uh -huh. which is, which is free-range chicken. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and that's not that easy to get, but mm -hmm. we get it. And we get wild venison, which we yeah. got today. Which is, I've yeah. got beef from Ireland, which is... A bit of a strange thing. I never thought I was going to open a restaurant in Spain and serve <laughs> um, Irish beef. But, I mean, 
It is the best beef I can get. Yeah. I've tried the Argentinian, mm-hmm. and it's okay, but it's not amazing. Mm-hmm. And the Irish beef is phenomenal, mm-hmm. so we're buying that. So, you know, it depends, but I, I'm looking just at the quality. It doesn't have to be organic. It's just that nine times out of ten, some of the organic stuff that comes through is really good. It's really good. Mm-hmm. And the wine is, is a great example yeah. of that. Yeah. It's a new addition. We've only just put that on in the last couple of weeks. But it's a great wine. The, the, the red and the rosé mm-hmm. are fantastic. And it, it kind of tastes much purer than the, than the other wines. So it's, it's brilliant to have on the list. Now, you've got ten books... Mm. But apparently you're... Has anybody ever read them? (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure they have. Um, I I believe you're um, involved with another book, but I'm just wondering how you're going to get along with that. I don't know how you know that. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know where you got that from. A little dicky Um, bird told me. (laughs) Well, yeah, I'm writing a book at the moment about... It's kind of like memoir stuff, um, but it's not autobiographical or anything. Mm. I I don't think I'm that important to, to have an autobiography. I just want to write a story with some of the fun things that have happened in my life and I'm not I'm not assuming that my life's over I just want to capture it uh-huh. because otherwise you forget you know the story I just told you about Richard Branson I've got hundreds of thousands of stories like that yeah. with different people I've met and different things that they've said and I want to capture some of that but also I've got some great stories from my last eight years I've been working with Formula One and hospitality, hospitality side, yeah. looking after hospitality which is VIP the top level of hospitality and of course I've got some great stories about Formula One drivers about the, the food about the people about you know, Bernie Eccleston you've got to be a bit careful what you say here uh-huh. and um, don't want to lose you but you know what I'm saying is that there's some fun stories I'm keeping yeah. it light and fun yeah. and that there won't be a lose you because most of it's positive it's yeah. just about that, that journey that I've gone through from restaurants to hotels from the first restaurant as I said the Pink Geranium sitting looking at the church and working day in day out like I'm doing now mm-hmm. and then kind of getting involved with shows like Ready Steady Cook and, and getting in shows this morning and radio and all that it just came out of nowhere because I didn't apply for anything it just, it just happened but you were, you were only 19, uh, I believe. Uh, you were one of the Britain's youngest ever chefs, which was, um, uh, you became Britain's youngest chef. Chef Patron. That's that it, was. Chef Patron. Yeah, I was yeah. trying to find the, the word. No, it's it. okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll help you out. Chef Patron. Thank you. <laughs> no, the thing is that the Chef Patron, what that is, is, mm-hmm. is a chef that, that kind of runs the shop. Mm-hmm. So Chef Patron is someone that would run the kitchen, but also would run the front house yeah. and run the business. And I was 19... And I don't think I was capable of running the business at 19, but I was given the opportunity by a small company based in East Anglia called Goff Hotels. Uh And it was a great opportunity because I was only a kid. And and my chef was like 50 years old, about my age now. And I was a kid at 19 and I was coming in telling him what to do. (laughs) It was a really difficult job. But I I did smash it. I mean, for whatever reason, I don't know how, but it really worked. That restaurant took off. And we had cars down the road. I mean, literally piled up down the road because I was doing the same things I'm doing in La Cala. I was doing just great food keep it simple keep it affordable mm-hmm. and people just packed in mm-hmm. the cars queued up and we used to have police knocking on the door saying can you get these people to move their cars because <laughs> we, we can't be in charge of the roads as well <laughs> and so on the back of that being chef patron and realising that you it came was, I came to um, yeah, I came yeah. with Pink Dream and it just went yeah. from there yeah, yeah, yeah. it's fantastic but, you know, in, in all honesty, I, I don't think that was the big break. I think being chef patron, being youngest chef patron, I didn't even think about it at the time. I just mm-hmm. thought it was nice to have that award. Yeah. But looking back, I mean, we haven't found many chefs that were chef patrons at that age. And of course, I came to, as chef patron of that hotel at 19. I came from the Savoy, and the Savoy was my, my training, big my big yeah. thing for me, really, because yeah. it taught me a lot. Okay. It taught me a lot about the kitchen and a lot about people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I'm doing what I love. And to be honest with Karen, I know it's hard work, and Sandy mm-hmm. has sat in the restaurant and, and watched me work and, and watched, you know, and you can see how mm-hmm. consuming it is. But I'm doing what I love to do. I love people. I love food. Put, I love wine. <laughs> you put food, wine, and people together. I'm absolutely happy. You I'm look really happy, happy to be here. Yeah. I'm tired, which is why I keep rubbing my eyes. <laughs> but I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to see everybody, and uh, I'm really enjoying it. And um, I'm happy that you came to uh, Thank you. talk to us, and so are the viewers, I'm sure. And we wish you all the best. And we'll probably have you back again when you've got time to talk yeah. about different aspects. Fun. Let's yeah. do it. Let's do yeah, it. M- maybe about using I might even cook something. <laughs> oh, that would be fantastic. Well, we should do that. Yeah. I, can, I can do that and bring something and show you how to create something from the menu. That would be brilliant. We'll do that. Yeah.